So I have a few poems for you today. My name is Afaf, I go by Fufu. I'm from Philly, as she said. Um, and I'm pretty happy to be in Tucson because it's a really nice city. Like nothing tops Philly, sorry. But <laughs> it's a really nice city anyway. All right. So the first poem I'm going to read to you is about a friend of mine who kind of like finds love in the wrong places, in my opinion. I remember a boy who loves out of habit. It creeps up on him every time, attacks every time, pulls him under again, and again he falls for the sake of falling. And again he breaks, but he still can't break the habit. Okay. The next poem I'm reading is about a different friend of mine who's always looking for love with one particular person. Um, this poem is written about her from my point of view. I'm in calculus now. I just got back my latest test score. It's lower than my self-esteem when I'm around you. Uh, Sometimes I look at you in classes and wonder if, sorry, <laughs> Got it. I'm actually going to pull it up because I'm sleep deprived. <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Okay. I'm in calculus now. I just got back my latest test score. It's lower than my self-esteem when I'm around you. Sometimes I look at you in classes just to see if the butterflies inside of me want to break free every time your cheeks touch your eyelashes. But it's not like I don't know the answer already. Everything about me, everything about you makes everything about me think of breaking because everything about me might love everything about you to the point of breaking. I wish we were closer. I wish we had the conversations I have with myself when I think of you, but it seems like your existence has thrown my confidence into extinctness. I read somewhere that monarch butterflies are going extinct now. I wonder how many we have left. I wonder if they're maybe all just living inside of me, attempting to break free every time your cheeks touch your eyelashes, like I'm attempting to break free of this classroom and this useless curriculum. I don't care about derivatives unless I can derive a reality where I'm sitting next to you and you're laying next to me and nothing else matters. But I just got back my latest test score and it's lower than my self-esteem when I'm around you. I think I just saw you walk past my hallway. I think these butterflies are about ready to escape now. I wonder what would happen if I asked you to help me free them. I'm about ready to ask you to help me help these butterflies escape. But if I did, would you even want to? And if you did, would we regret it? And could they fill up the distance between us? Uh. <laughs> this next poem uh, is one I wrote not too long ago but I like to think of it as a long time ago because I had a different mindset when I approached poetry. When I wrote this piece, this was when I refused to write personal pieces or pieces that really mattered to me. I wrote this piece in defense of dishonest poetry or like poetry that doesn't really mean anything to me. I think I'm afraid of my own pen. Or maybe I'm just afraid of bleeding. They say pen beats sword. But what they don't tell you is that both can draw blood. War is war. And there will always be casualties. Although we may write life, we can't write our own inadequacies. But maybe it's not my pen I'm afraid of. Maybe it's whatever comes after. After you've bled life into line pages, is there anything that can bleed life back into you? this one um, and it was I think one of the first personal pieces I actually got myself to write. It's called To a Young Girl. Um, I'm from Darfur, Sudan and I've seen some stuff. This is what this poem is about basically. 
Um, when they ask you for your story, lift your head up. Speak it. Remember that it belongs to you and you alone. But the pain is not yours to bear. Tell your story. Speak loudly. Speak clearly. Don't let the devil strike you silent. You are more than the pain they caused you. Bigger than your body. Louder than your voice. Your existence is a cacophony. Make them listen. Your voice is daggers. Make them flinch. You have the right to feel pain like you have the right to exist. But the guilt is not yours to bear. Let it go. When the nightmares come, try to sleep anyway. Claim your rest. Tired eyes don't bring back ghosts departed. The pain will still be there in the morning, but so will the sun. Drown out the voices. There was nothing you could do. The world is bigger than you are. The evil stronger than you could be, but never forget. We must learn from pain. Make use of the cards that cut you. Testify so another doesn't have to. Remember, but don't let the anger burn you. Let it go. But your right to forgive is not tied with their right to be forgiven. Find your peace, but keep it to yourself. To hell with them. Woo! Yeah. inspired by a conversation I had with my grandfather and it was about like genocide in Darfur and like why it happens and stuff but this this poem took place way after the conversation um, but a quote that he said that really stuck with me is the first line of the poem our very existence is a threat to our existence only others who have felt the pain of learning that there's not a thing you can do to make up for what you are truly understand. I heard pretentious ask black man why his pants sag like willows. I think maybe it's because like heads, it's hard to hold waist up high when skin weighs so heavy. Or maybe they've just grown accustomed to hanging. For me, it is my shoelaces that refuse to behave. They are constantly diving for cover, aglets up in surrender, history always repeating itself. Okay. This next piece goes out to the insomniacs in the <laughs> audience. Um, this poem I wrote at like 3 a.m. I think. It was pretty late. And these are kind of like the thoughts that came to mind in the middle of the night when no normal, rational person is awake. Um, it's a coffee kind of night. My eyes burn the way they sometimes do when I look at you. I think I'm lonely, but I blink and the feeling's gone, and I'm feeling wrong. I hate these midnight hours, like I hate these coffee beans, maybe because they remind me of you. Somewhat soothing unless you find yourself drowning in them day after day. I think I love you. But I blink and the feeling's gone and I'm way too far from sleep. But caffeinated consciousness is overrated, which leaves me somewhere in the twilight zone. Except the writing isn't as good, like the imagined conversations I have between the two of us. I hate that they'll never go anywhere. And I wonder how you can know someone for so long, yet not at all. My eyes burn, and I think I miss you, which is strange because we barely even speak. Sorry, which is strange because we barely even speak. I think I love you. But I blink and the feeling's gone. I hate these midnight hours like I hate these coffee beans and the silence that comes with them. I'm drowning in it. Like coffee. Like midnight. Like you. Give you a throwback, like very far thrown back. 
this is one of my first poems ever, Whoa. but I still think it's sentimental. It's a very, it's thrown all the way back. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this is for the underachievers, the non-believers, the fakers, mistakers, the mischief makers, the sinners, beginners, the wannabe thinners, the learners, the loners, the lovers, the stoners, the all I want is to go back homers, the move alongers, the wish I was strongers, the wish I knew where I belongers, the I don't think I'll ever belongers, the why won't I ever belongers, this is for you. This is for every hour you counted the minutes till you turned beautiful, and every minute you wondered if you'd ever be beautiful, and every second you spent thinking you weren't beautiful, be you. Be flawed, be flawless, be fearless, be breathless, be careless, be thoughtful, be wonderful, be colorful, be meaningful, be beautiful. Don't let them warp you with perfection. Because the only thing that isn't perfect about you is the society that you live in. You're more than just a product of the society you live in. Don't let them poison you with symmetry and silicone. Don't let them carve you into a shiny, empty replica of the ideals that were forced upon them. Don't become them. In the words of Dr. Seuss, today you are you. That is truer than true. There's no one alive who is youer than you, or a meer than me, or a cheer than she. Today you and me will be freer than free. Today you and me will be you and me. All right. Yeah.